What's up YouTube, Hanzo here. Today I want to break down some solo Warzone gameplay that I recorded the other day. I was running snapshot grenades on restock and these things basically carried me to the win. Now I've seen a lot of content that just shows the crazy wall hack kind of kills that you can get. And yes, you can get crazy kills with snapshot grenades. But what I want to show in this video is how you can really implement snapshot grenades into your game in a way that you can actually increase your chances of winning Warzone. For instance, sometimes you just get shot in the back or if somebody simply walks up on you and lasers you and you feel like there was nothing you could do that guy simply saw you first everybody who's played warzone will have experienced this and many players are still struggling with this i'll commentate over this game and try to show you how to prevent that and what a game with snapshot grenades from start to finish looks like please like if you enjoy this kind of content and by the way do follow me over on twitch as well if there isn't a new youtube video there's definitely content over there i might even be live at that moment all right let's jump into this game people who watch my stream know that uh, the first thing that i do is basically check out where to drop i do think that it's really important like where you drop uh, right now i'm searching for a spot that's kind of away from the drop line but still either outside or just inside of the first circle there's a scav here bounty contract usually i ping the bounty contracts just to get intel uh let's say you're hunted and then all of a sudden that bounty contract is gone, then at least you have that intel that um, your pursuer is probably coming from that direction. Anyways, I think I got my sights set on uh, on the scav and uh, we're about to drop. The initial drop is always very important, I feel, because what you want to be looking at is um, not just a drop I'm, we're talking about what are your best chances of winning, right? Definitely, if you feel like you need to improve in gunfights, then definitely, by all means, do drop peak. If you prefer a more aggressive playstyle, then by all means, do drop peak or anywhere else uh, and start hunting for kills. But if you're really talking about increasing your kind of chances to win, then that this is my recommendation. You drop uh, either a little bit on the outside or on the inside of um, the first circle that's known and preferably away from the drop line um and what this does actually i think i spot someone here uh i get the scav and then he already uh, gets a shot off um yeah i'm basically scrambling for guns here because i have nothing i hear the audio cue All right, and that's how sometimes it goes. Um, so even though we win this game, spoiler alert, but sometimes you just get clipped and um, yeah, I wasn't fully played it up. Uh, the shoddy wasn't doing uh, wasn't doing enough there for me. And by the way, remember that guy uh, from earlier because we will uh, get our revenge uh, later in the game. Yeah, basically I, I usually stand behind this thing, uh, wait for audio cues, and then um, and then uh, pop out when I think that I have a an angle on the opponent. All right, so I don't recommend dropping back in, in or in the area that you died. But in this case, things are different. We picked up a scav, um, and this is the kind of area where you can still re-drop and be safe because there's cranes here um there are let's say we drop in here and we see we spot the guy that killed us now he must have guns we don't um but still we're on this crane so we have cover and if needed and he's pushing us we can choose to have that gunfight or we can kind of um parachute and glide off uh, to a different location so that's kind of uh, the thought process here why i drop back in not only that i mean we died we went to the gulag we lost uh, valuable time and the scav is actually a really good way to you know get back in the fight uh we get money we can buy a lodi uh, and so forth so right now i'm just basically taking my time i'm i'm checking the angles because for that time that we were in the gulag, we had no intel on this uh, on this area, and so we don't know if somebody's already, you know, in the area, 
And if the, the guy that shot us is uh, is also still in the area. I think I spot someone on the left. That might actually be uh, be the guy from earlier. He gets into a car, drives off. And somebody also did a recon over in one of the buildings nearby. So now the plan is just to loot up and um, get as much intel as we can on uh, on who's who's around us. Objectives found. So I hear audio cue. I have a stun. I slide in. Um, wasn't the best. We did get hit because he was uh, he was prone. But uh, usually they either jump uh, to engage or they just walk around the corner uh, or anything else. But uh, the fact that he was prone was maybe the least favorable uh, outcome there. But, you know, we get the hit from the stun and uh, that's basically uh, your time to, to move in. Uh, the guy gave us a big uh, bag of, uh, of cash, which is good. That pushed us over the edge to uh, get our loadie. Uh, I have one look uh, around into the surroundings and uh, and see that we're uh, we're safe to buy the Lodi and, and get it. And that's basically what what the video is about uh, restock. So um, you know if you take restock, you can't get ghost or you can't get overkill or any other uh, um, perk too. So I have to. I don't have an SMG. I don't have my SM SMG of choice, so what I do is I pick up the PPSH. The safe zone. And this is a hipfire build. Uh, I haven't really shot it, so um, not the cleanest shots uh, in the rest of the video with, uh, with the PPSH, but at least it's better than a pistol. So this is basically the first time I'm using uh, the snapshot grenade. The range on these things is really um, is really big. So just one snapshot grenade over there, and if I don't get a hit marker, I know that this whole building is kind of safe. Um, and that is that is basically the key to using snapshot grenades in war zone. Often people come from unexpected angles, um, and when you move through the map. What you're basically always doing or what you should be doing is controlling the space and controlling the space means that you're, you're getting okay. intel on who's around you but also you're minimizing your angles of exposure so you're minimizing the angles that you can get hit from what the snapshot grenade does is let's say there's an angle that you can't quite cover or there's some you want to get you get you want to get from point a to point b now the snapshot can be thrown in a direction where you think you might get shot from. You throw the snapshot, you don't get a... If you don't get a hit with the snapshot, that is actually good news. So now you know you're safe. Um, also this, I'm not too eager to get that Lodi because there were there was two Lodi's. If I dropped down, if I had I dropped down there, uh, I would have definitely been uh, vulnerable. And we are not in a rush the first circle hasn't closed in so right now we're not incentivized whatsoever to move into the circle so we can just uh, we can just hang back for a moment and um and play this uh, this area out we do want to finish the scav i throw another snap so that means this building is now clear and even if they have Battle Hardened, by the way, Battle Hardened counters the Snapshot Grenade, but even if they have Battle Hardened, you will still get a hit marker. And that's basically the most important info that you want. If the Snapshot hits and they don't have Battle Hardened, then you just have a clear sight. Uh, you just have a wall hack uh, on their position. Objectives found. Move to the next location. So here it's just uh, slow and steady. I want to make my way from house to house to uh, to the scav. See if I can laser that guy. Nope. I'm not committing, right? There's no need to uh, to chase that. 
Probably wants to buy something at the shop over there. And again, I don't know who's in this building. We want to use snapshots as, you know, uh, as best as we can. You saw a little bit of a, you know, blip uh, also on the UAV. And that means that you can kind of see the area of effect of your snapshot grenade. We just saw somebody on the high ground. We saw a, a ping on the high ground. Now, before I want to move to the next building, my right side is uh, a liability. Somebody could laser us from the right side. So what I do is I check uh, the right side before we kind of move on. And here, I just want to be 100% sure that where there was a ping just now, uh, nobody's there. Okay, so we, we checked. Snapshot grenade on the high ground. Uh, nobody's there. I want to move to the next building. So I throw another snapshot grenade. I mean, this is kind of really slow and steady. But I think a lot of people can relate with uh, that situation where you just get lasered out of the blue. You don't know where it came from. But mostly, most of the time, that's just because you walk in a straight line and you walk exactly to your target without really checking uh, your surroundings. We saw a ping earlier in this building. So again, I use a snapshot grenade. Now I get a hit. I catch the last glimpse uh, of this guy running away. This basically tells me that I can go and take the high ground. I can go on this roof without really worrying about getting lasered because we saw that he was on the ground floor again i throw a snap in like the general direction there he is another effect of the snapshot grenade is when somebody gets hit you players usually immediately start to panic like shit i'm spotted uh, what do i do and maybe he was better off being in staying in this building but he didn't because he thought that he was about to get lasered um, any second. Anyways, that engagement right there was, you know, made even easier with combat, uh, combat recon. Because as soon as we get a hit marker, we can basically trace him through that tent, and uh, he doesn't send a send a chance there. So the reason I'm moving over to the right flank here is. To let me just uh, pause it for a second and uh, use my awesome drawing tools. Uh, so the reason I want to take this route into the circle is because I kind of want to make sure that my right flank over here is safe. I want to be moving in a way that I have the gas in my back and my right side is also kind of cleared if i move in a straight line to here then i can actually i'm actually exposed from possibly from this side and from the other side if i don't do that and i rotate or i move into the new circle as what i showed just now what that does is we can kind of all the while we walk over here we look into this direction and that gives us all the intel we need to kind of uh, stay safe. All right. So we have the location on the bounty. He doesn't know where we're coming from, which is actually an extra reason why you would want to kind of approach him from an off angle, an angle that he doesn't really expect. I'm just taking the high ground here. See if I can get into a uh, power position or at least a position where I have intel on him. All right, we spot him. Not the cleanest shots. This was, I believe, the first match of the day, but it's all good. 
because uh, with the snapshots we uh, we can basically finish the job. It's it's that easy, really. Um, I mean, he was already cracked, but uh, with the snapshot grenades, um, it you can just pre-aim so well with these things. I throw a snap over there because that's kind of the only angle where we could still get third party from. We made noise, uh, that could be risky. Um, and the other side, we just came from there, so we know nobody uh, is going to mess with us from that side. Alright, the new circle, or the circle, is closing in. So this is kind of a good moment to assess the situation. What is... First of all, we have a UAV in the air, so we want to make use of that. Uh, we want to actually check what the UAV uh, potentially gives us. And... Once the new circle closes, I want to be thinking about what's my next uh, rotation. So that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm kind of waiting until the next circle closes. And this is the moment where we uh, check the map, I think. Yes. All right. So this is interesting. Uh, I pinged the car there. I know that a car stopped over here, which is crucial info. If we're looking at a circle like this, the best rotation in my mind is a rotation where we either do this. It gives us the best chance of, again, moving into the next circle where we have a lot of gas in our back and we can kind of have a good pinwheel rotation. Our rotation minimizes our exposure to uh, to enemies. And because this is the intended rotation and we just see that a car is stopping there, this actually, I mean, this already alerts us and means that we are going to have to be careful with uh, with this approach. Here. I'm not sure why I, why I pinged that, but maybe that was kind of a, a good next spot to go to, I thought, at that moment. I think this is also kind of a, a really strategic spot to uh, to take it easy because right now we have an excellent angle. I'm going to hold it right there. We have an excellent angle to basically check this line. This is kind of a straight line of sight to get intel who's rotating from that side. I'm kind of checking... Um, the cliff over there where uh, where somebody uh, stopped or got out of the car but i don't see anything so we're uh, we're continuing on to our uh, rotation this can be a place where uh, where people are uh, are hiding and uh, we have the we have the snapshots on uh, on restock so why not i pick up a cluster for free i like it and i throw out another snapshot grenade because you kind of you kind of never know who's uh, who's on the left side people might be uh, hiding in uh, in the shrubs or uh, or whatever I hear gunshots, I check the map, see if there's a ping. Now I have intel on that position. So I'm slowly making my way to uh, to the high ground here, where we know we're gonna run into somebody. And I will, and I will still check my left side. I do hear gunshots now. So I just draw out a snap to be sure that really nobody's um, catching us off guard from the left side and I want to be faster here because we just heard the gunshot so there might be potential for us to third party somebody here. And this is this is a um, this is big. So we just heard UAV is active. And usually a UAV is something that you yourself pop the UAV, you get intel on your surroundings. But whenever you hear UAV is active, this is actually a moment where you should check your map 
and check where the buy stations are at because usually people activate their UAV the moment they buy it from the buy station. So we can kind of triangulate, we can kind of deduce where is that person likely coming from. You won't hear UAVs active for everybody in the whole map, only for people who are kind of in your radius. So now that we hear that, we had that info of somebody being here, we had the info of gunshots being fired and we had the info of UAVs active. So this is very likely that somebody is here and knows our position because we don't have ghosts. And in fact, yes, this guy was about to push us. We, we threw the snapshot grenade. We had to drop on him. So even though we were in cover, we were in the bush, but we were still able to uh, kind of uh, laser him. I don't know where I picked up the, um, the claymores. Maybe I had them in the loadout or, or I, right now I use Semtex. But yeah, why not? Uh, in the in the case that he kind of downs us and he uh, pushes us, maybe the the claymores can uh, can kind of save us. Trying to laser him out of the car, but doesn't work. By the way, this is the dude. This is the dude we, who shot us and uh, sent us to the gulag. Uh, so we are uh, getting our revenge, uh, maybe. He kind of jumps out and uh, and tries to tries to get a couple shots in on us, but so far he's uh, he's successfully hiding behind the tree. The I throw the cluster because I uh, I don't want to lose any time here. I just want to get over with this uh, with this engagement. We down him with the shots. Unfortunately, the cluster is uh, is out of range. So I'm not gonna. We're, we're too much out of range. This is actually an important part. We're too much out of range to push him. But what happened five seconds ago? I was about to have, I was about to take a more assertive position on, on this guy that we just downed, uh, going for the kill. But I check right, I check again. And in fact, I see somebody running here. And this is actually crucial intel. In, at this point. So yeah, we're going into circle six, which is already end game. People are gonna play much more slower. People are gonna be campier. Preferably, if you're going into the end game, especially in this case, I wanna make sure that behind me, we have nothing to worry about. We wanna go into this circle and then only have to worry about what is in front of us. Now this guy, looking at his movement, he's about to circle right into our backs so this kind of screws the whole plan or the whole rotation maybe the guy's trying to get to to the buy or who knows but one thing is for certain we are about to get sandwiched between this guy that probably already selfed um and the guy who's uh, who's coming uh, from behind so this changes things we can't really push the guy that we just downed we can't move in aggressively. We first need to get out of positionally. We need to get out of the situation where we're about to get uh, sandwiched or uh, or third party. Right, just throw in another snap. Maybe see if the guy is uh, is waiting here, and he isn't. We hear the gunshots. So at this point, we are, our movement is really limited. We we can't really, we don't really have freedom of movement. Not only that, there's a car pushing us. So I'm just trying to stay out of sight and um, and not commit to uh, to anything really, because we're but we can get third party any second here. We know that somebody's here. I throw out a snap just to check if he's not coming from that side that I was uh, expecting him to come from. And there he is. He doesn't know we're here, so this is a this is an easy kill. And now we're looking at six people. 
So six people are left. Uh, I'm trying to get a better lethal, a more useful lethal, because we are uh, definitely in the end game now, and the two claymores uh, are not really uh, going to do much for us. So right now, it's all about gathering intel. Six people left. We're about to enter the sixth circle. This is all about just trying to kill whoever we can, but our position and staying concealed is equally important. So the guys who were fighting over there. Um, okay, so I have a sniper on my left. I have an assault rifle. He has a sniper. So this now, the left flank is uh is not a good way to rotate anymore because uh we we're likely not going to win that so what i want to do is probably rotate over to the right or find a a different spot uh from uh, or a different angle where we can better um fight this uh, this sniper guy all right Again, snapshots really useful because I throw... This is an area where somebody could easily be uh, be camping. But we throw the snapshot and just with one snapshot grenade, we know that now this right area is kind of safe. We don't have to worry about that. So I am checking it, but I'm more... I'm not checking um, in, like in, in a radius of uh, 20 meters. I'm checking beyond that. I thought I still had a claymore there, so actually somebody, somebody rotated in and the snapshot gave us all the intel that we needed. He's in a perfect position. He is in a perfect position, but he could easily laser us. But because of the snapshot, we knew his position. So here the snapshot absolutely uh, saved our ass. What I said earlier about snapshots making people run away, that's basically what's happening here. He knows I haven't seen this guy, but um, I haven't seen this guy, but he has seen me. So he's kind of spooked. He's moving away. Now we're looking at it was just three, three players left. Now it's two players left. You want to be the moment it's three players left. You want to be moving into the most dominant position when they're fighting. Actually, you want to stay concealed when they start to fight is the moment you want to swoop in. That's kind of the the moment when you want a third party. Once it's two people left, um, you know, the last shot I heard was a sniper shot. Which means this fight could end really quickly if I uh, run out in the open without knowing where he is. So I'm playing it safe here. I spot him. I crack him. Try to move in. He flashes us. That was... Don't ask me about that grenade. <laughs> and again, we we, uh, we get a hit. We crack him again. He fights back. We barely win this here. I just ADS this because I need to get my health back. And now we snap. I think he's still there, but he just moved to the right. He was about to completely outflank us. Completely. I was unaware of this flanking maneuver that he did, so props on him. But we had the snapshot grenades. Um, and um, yeah, we, we were able to turn to the exact side that he's on and take cover behind the tree. Otherwise, this game would have already been over. I can take it easy here. I can take it easy. Not only that, we get, we get the pull. Trying to, we already cracked him twice, so I'm just, um, this is just a war of attrition. I don't need to push, I don't need to take that risk. He needs to come to us. So this is also big. 
because of the snapshot grenade, we knew exactly where he was. We were able to hide behind the tree, which completely concealed our location. He probably thought that we had already moved further into the circle. And it was just an easy uh, laser at that point. Not all shots were accurate, but it doesn't matter. Um, because we had the position on him and he had no uh, he had no clue in the end. So yeah, really good on his part to relocate. He had the better shots there. He absolutely had the better shots in that in that final engagement. But he had the better shots and he was more proactive in moving uh in better uh, in better positions and uh, and flanking us. But because of the snapshots, we always knew where he was. We were able to get basically win the war of attrition ping away all his plates and uh, at the same time stay concealed and stay safe um behind uh, behind cover so yeah that's it not that many kills but uh, i think it's a good example of how you can play with snapshot grenades and how you can get a win with snapshot grenades what we did in that game was just we used snapshot grenades whenever we made all of our ro our whole rotation from start to finish. We made it safe. We had all the info. Usually in Warzone, you just get lasered from an angle that you didn't expect or whatever. And then it's just over before you know it. If you're really good, you can kind of still win an engagement when... Um, you can still win an engagement when somebody started to shoot first. But the reality is that usually this is not the case. If somebody starts to shoot first, if somebody has intel on you, if somebody knows your position, then you're likely going to lose that gunfight. And losing a gunfight in a battle royale means you're out. Yes, you have the gulag, but uh, your lives are really, really limited. So, um, yeah, that's it.